As I went through my library of missionary biographies recently, I came across this little book. It was written, um, I think published 1949, thereabouts, in uh, Kowloon in Hong Kong, called What God Has Wrought, the subtitle, Joys and Sorrows of Missionary Life. And that sure is true. It's just a little book, 70 pages, but wow, you are just so moved as you read what these believers suffered for the cause of Christ. Herman and Augusta Becker. It's the story of their ministry there from 1917 to 1949. And they eventually started uh, an orphanage there and worked during the famine tirelessly to help people. He was involved in negotiations with rescuing missionaries. He was well-respected and actually saved the life of the son of one of the communist generals, and as a result had some purchase in helping some missionaries to escape from their clutches. At this time, he was working in uh, southwest Hunan province, and the country was overrun with bandits. In fact, at one time, I think he said there were 16 different groups of bandits. He writes, 24 times in one year, I have been held up by bandits. Three times they tried to kill me. Once they took away everything I had and led me up a mountain to be killed. There a man on each side of me held my arms while a third man lifted a sword to split my head. Just at that moment, the bandit chief sprang into view, snatched the sword from the man's hand, and saved my life. So it was a very dangerous environment in which to serve the Lord. Well, in this particular story I'm going to tell you today, he said that they had been praying earnestly for a time of awakening. They had had 10 different missionaries laboring in this area for about 11 years and had seen 51 saved and baptized. And he said, this is not acceptable with millions of lost people in the area. We need to see more people saved. And so they began a special prayer meeting, first just a handful, and then it grew and grew until all the believers were gathered and praying. This was in 1917. And so they began to pray that they might have the gospel campaign in February of 1918. Of course, this was at the end of the First World War. And uh, he said, this gave me time to prepare, seven months to prepare for this gospel series. But then on uh, Saturday afternoon, January 30 of 1918, as he was walking along the street, he heard a cry bandits have entered the city. He hurried home. He said almost immediately all the shops closed. The streets became vacant as people fled from the bandits. He said, I didn't see any bandits, but when I got to my house, here were some soldiers standing out in front of the house, 30 soldiers. And uh, he asked them, what were they doing there? And they said, well, the bandit had entered into his house. And he said, well, don't stand here. He'll They'll kill everyone in, in the house. Go in and, and rescue my family. And he led the way in. But he said, when we reached the house, I found my wife lying outside in a pool of blood with seven wounds. This bandit had stolen a sword from one of the soldiers and had attacked his wife. Uh, he goes on to describe them in graphic detail one wound two and a half inches long, another one four and a half inches long. Uh, he had tried to behead her, but the, the sword had s struck a bone, and so uh, she had been able to flee from that. Uh, he stabbed her four times with a small knife and so on. Terrible. And, and the last time, uh, he took a third stroke to her head, and this time it says fracturing the skull and laying bare the brain. Well, anyway, 
when this bandit fled the house, uh, he was killed, and um, the doctor was 24 hours away. It took 24 hours to get there. When he got there, he said, look, you've done everything you can for her. I can't do any more. She's probably not going to survive. After some time, um, she wrote a little bit on a paper as to what she wanted, but it was all mixed up in Chinese and German and English. And he said, uh, we began to teach her as you would teach a little child how to speak all over again. And it took a full two years, but God restored this woman. There are pictures in here of her wounds after she was attacked. God restored her fully to the service of the Lord. And the two other women that were also wounded in the attack also fully recovered. But now, here's the point of the story. He writes, At first we couldn't understand this strange providence, but we remembered that the word said, All things work together for good to those that love God. And so he says, we soon learned how God was about to overrule it for untold good. And here's what happened. A man came to a Brother Becker one day and said that the governor of the area had taken 15 members of that bandit's family. And according to the Chinese rule, the Chinese law, if this bandit had already died, of course, in the, in the scuffle with the soldiers. And so the Chinese law said that if a person kills or try to kill anyone, his relatives are held responsible for the act. And so these 15 relatives of this bandit had been taken, including his mother, and they were going to be beheaded, executed that day. And so Brother Becker went to the governor and pled for their lives. He said, this is not right. These people are not guilty. They should not die. And the governor said, I have to do it um, to make others fear and to realize they can't act like this, and, and I'm going to go ahead with it. Well, Becker said to the governor, quote, I will stay here until the hour of execution, and when the sword is drawn to behead the first one, I will jump under the sword and receive the blow, and you will have to suffer the consequences. <laughs> I tell you, he was going to suffer the consequences first, and then the governor. And so uh, the governor realized it was not going to be a winning situation for him, and so he called the people together, and he said, this man has pled for your lives. Uh, he's responsible now for your behavior, and I'm going to set you free. Well, what happened? He writes, from that time, the attitude toward us was entirely changed. Hearts and doors at last were open to the gospel. The murderer's old mother was one of the 15 whose lives were spared, and later she was saved and baptized. And then he goes on to describe all the people that got saved as a result of this. He said, when we came to Yuan Chao in 1911, only five persons had been baptized. At this writing, January 1933, 2031 have confessed Christ. Now we have between 600 and 1,000 at the Sunday service and many more on special occasions. Besides, there are 22 outstations and some 10 preaching places. And so he writes, it's easy to see how God worked together for good what seemed at the time to be only a terrible tragedy. History is full of these events, things that seem to be absolute evil and no redeeming feature to them. And God says, well, now you wait. Do we not have a great example of this? Is the cross an exception to the rule, or is it the rule? Well, no, it's the rule, isn't it? That God takes the worst thing that ever happened and turned it into the best thing that ever happened. And so God help us to have faith in the dark times and difficult times to say, Lord, I don't understand this now, 
but I believe you're going to turn this to good. Why? Because he said he would. That all things, not good in themselves, but will work together for good. That ultimately it will happen. That's why David said, I will yet praise him. I don't feel like praising him right now. But God has such a good track record of doing what he said he would do in turning what seemed to be total evil, total negative things into positive, glorious things that I, I know I will ultimately someday praise him for this too. I will yet praise him. And so let's not be downcast by the difficulties in our life. Let's say, Lord, I'm waiting for you to turn this inside out, to turn it from negative to positive, to turn it from sorrow to joy. May God help us to go on trusting him. Don't doubt him in these times because God has put his name on the line. He's guaranteed that he will make sure that all things do work together for good. God help us to lay hold of his truth, to cling to him in these times of sorrow, and to see the sorts of things that the Beckers saw in China in those dark days 